I'm also one of those, not, I wouldn't say loud, but I'm also one of those people who like want to present their ideas to everybody because I think that I have really good ideas. So it's like, is it really cold switching anymore when it's someone that you became, mm -hmm. something that you developed into? In a sense, it's like, damn, I really have to do that. Um, but it also, like, I also want to show other young Latinas who are women that they, they can do it. It's like a constant 24-7 awareness. Um, and it's kind of, and it's something that's just built over time with a lot of different experiences. In my experience at Marymount, I never felt like my identity as a female or my identity as a woman of color has ever played a role in anything I did. Marymount is kind of an anomaly of sorts because despite being a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution, many of its registered student organizations are led by female student presidents of color, a demographic not often reflected in influential leadership. But that's obviously been changing on a national scale and right here at Marymount. But I was curious about how they navigate being a minority in a position of power among students who carry privileges and experiences that they don't. How do you go about leading students who don't look like you and how do you connect with them when the roles are swapped? I'm constantly aware of my blackness and my presenting gender at all times. It doesn't just happen when I step foot on to a PWI campus at a magically I'm this person. So within the context of Marymount, Marymount is a very small piece of just like a larger experience. When you're in an educational space where you hold some sort of leadership, it does amplify a little bit. You definitely have to be sometimes a source of information or enlightenment or the perspective everyone's like kind of waiting to hear. And there are times where people ask me to speak and sometimes I feel the reason that they ask me to speak is not because of my talent or what, like, or the position I hold, but just because I'm this minority who somehow, somewhere has like this power kind of thing. It mm -hmm. makes me feel kind of weird sometimes. I feel like a token. I think white people are expected to be ignorant and people of color are not really expected to be ignorant. So um, presenting learning sometimes is challenging. Well, to me, sometimes I feel like your mind is power. So in a sense, if I don't think about it, I doubt you're going to think about it or I feel in my head that you're not thinking about it. So I'm just going to sometimes i totally omit the fact of like race or the fact that i'm a woman sometimes to really get through to what i'm trying to say to you if i'm talking about soak attack um i'm not gonna address or like even mention the fact that i'm afro-caribbean you know i mean i would for credibility of what i'm doing and what i'm teaching you um but I'm not gonna put you in that box of other. In terms of like, I guess like gender identity, I am I am pretty aware of it, but also in the sense that like, um, Marymount is mainly like women, so it's nice to see that I can build bonds with other women, um, we support each other. Like most, all my friends mainly are women. So in that sense, I'm aware of it because we could talk about like anything we want to, like. I guess woman related um, without any shame um, but the one I'm more aware of is my um, being a person of color obviously physically because um, like uh, either in classes or just walking down the hallway like I can I know that I physically I look different so basically ever since I was a child race or gender has never been something I had to be super mindful of at least in accordance to myself. 
I never felt like I needed to remember, oh, I'm the brown girl in the room or I'm the female brown girl in the room because in my upbringing, growing up in Queens, um, being raised in New York City, I've always been around a diverse group of people that kind of just referred to me as Sabrina who does this or Sabrina who does that. I've always felt comfortable because of the upbringing to at home where my parents have never felt the need to say like you know like you are you have to be mindful of the, your race or you have to remember you're a female or anything like that they've never put a mentality in my mind that I had to be hyper aware of who I was in the room. And then what ways do you feel like that's not an aspect that people are paying attention to like your race or gender doesn't really matter in the interactions you're having with people on campus? Like I think one of the spaces where I feel like that is the SOS just because I, I can see more people who are like me and people in kind of like the same like st student leader space so they don't recognize me for the color of my skin or the gender but they recognize me for the work that I've done. Well, one, I'm a part of the um, HIAP program. I can find people who look like me and who have come from similar backgrounds, whether it's culturally or like through the social economic aspect, um, where we have similar like struggles or upbringing. In that sense, I can like um, relate to them. Uh, I took a class that was based around like Latinx theater and most of the people in that class were either black or latinx um and since we were the majority of that in that space there were just baseline there were just like baseline understandings amongst students amongst the professors and we could like go more in depth when we had conversations surrounding race or colorism it wasn't always just like the basics the 101s that you would have to explain if you were in a class that was predominantly white. Specifically in those classes where the content is centered around people of color, um, which kind of just only happened once. So that one class. But other than that, no. When did you learn about the concept of code switching? When I came here four years ago. Code switching. Hilarious. Um, we have a very interesting relationship. It was funny. At first, I was when I was coming here, I was really scared because I was like this weird brown Dubai girl. Not even brown, just like weird Dubai girl. And I had heard people being really mean when I visited first. I'd come to New York itself. When I first came to Marymount, I promise you, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I was scared. And that kind of scared the crap out of me. And I'm an extrovert, a complete extrovert. And in some ways, because of all of that, and like me thinking that I have to code switch and not be who I actually am, kind of closed me off and I went into the shell. And I started opening up my sophomore year, but my freshman year I was really closed off. And all I did was go to school and come go back to the dorms. I'm an international student, but I have a U.S. passport because the Virgin Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands is owned by the U.S. So I can't really relate to international students who travel on a visa and have green cars and these type of things. But I also can't relate totally to Americans and even African Americans sometimes. So I actually... <laughs> The first time I heard of it was when you sent me the question regarding it. I've never heard of code switching before. I actually didn't know that code switching, what code switching was. I knew, I knew like sometimes I would subconsciously like switch how I would talk. Um, so like with my friends or something, um, especially like people who are like I grew up with um, or people who are here that are from where I'm from. Um, I can talk to them in like kind of a, like a slang way or even in Spanish. Um, but when I'm talking to like a professor or when I'm talking to in a meeting or when I'm talking to students, like given, given a presentation on like the club or et cetera, I do, I did notice after reflecting that I do co-switch in the sense that like I feel like one 
as a person of color, I have to like represent sort of um, and show them that I am worthy of like being in the position that I am. Um, and sometimes what comes with that is how we speak. Yeah, I actually had to ask someone about it today. What is it? Um, how they define it? From the understanding that I have that they gave, um, basically switching, changing yourself when you're in a room of different people in uh, regarding kind of their race or their gender or whatever, just to kind of fit in. Older people of color around me made jokes about, oh, when you, you know, when you talk to this person, you got to put on your white voice. Like the white voice was always like something that would we joke about and would actually use because you just don't want to get treated differently if you don't have to get treated differently. But I feel like when I really understood what code switching was, was when I was in elementary and I had a white friend and she was like, yeah, I'm more black than you. Cause she knew all like the terminology and she knew all of like the slangs and she had like the whole accent going on and I kind of just came in there talking like this and they're just like, yeah, you talk, you talk white and she was white. It became a part of me. It became second nature to do it. Um, I guess to make myself feel a bit more welcomed, a bit more in the blend, in the mix of the people. I think I've learned it even more at my time here at Marymount because I'm international and I don't speak like everybody else. I don't look like everybody else. I think it's important for me to code switch if I want to get people to respect me, get people to hear me, have what I have to say heard. I have to change my accent accordingly. I have to act a certain kind of way. Code switching in my life came in a, in a place where I was still developing myself. So as soon as I walk through the doors of Marymount, I feel that's when it's like, and you know, and then after when you leave, it's like seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, never felt like I needed to code switch. Um, I think if I ever felt like I needed to act some type of way, it would probably be in regards to like, you know, maybe if I like forgot a detail at a meeting or like something very small, something that's more in relationship to my work and not because of, not in relation to my identity. When I feel like someone is gonna appreciate like me just being real, that's, that's what I switch to, that's the code switch that I go to, just being real and being totally myself so that you're comfortable being yourself with me. Sometimes that's not the case because even if I'm trying to be myself, you probably bring up um, the fact that you're not me. Because first and foremost, I'm an ambassador for the Caribbean. That's my role here at Marymount that I feel like I hold a lot of responsibility to, um, to represent the culture. That's really what I focus on just like representing my culture in the way that it's supposed to be represented and you know just like being with people who also just want to share that love from where they come from because I love I love when people appreciate their culture and the receivers appreciate it just as much it's gotten to the point where I don't know where my neutral personality starts and stops it's kind of weird i feel like i'm very much defined by the people who are like closest to me um just in terms of the rhetoric that i use the inflections that i choose to use um and that's really annoying and it's kind of hard to turn that off and it's something i'm definitely unlearning i realize that i'm constantly mimicking the language and mannerisms of the people around me and it's not even a conscious mimicking it's very subconscious and i catch myself doing it and it's really really freaky because then what happens when you know when two of your worlds collide it's like who do you code switch to